choices. One, it is all true, exactly as the memo suggests. Two, it is partly true and partly false. Three, it is all false, and there is no secret society that has endured from 1090 AD to the present. Well, it isn't all true. Mayor Daly never said Aviga Blumencraft to Senator Ribikoff. Saul had read in the Washington Post a lip-reader's translation of Daly's diatribe, and there was no German in it, although there was obscenity and anti-Semitism. The vice out Washington impersonation theory also had some flaws. In those days, before plastic surgery, such an undetected assumption of the identity of a well-known figure was especially hard to credit, despite the circumstantial evidence quoted in the memos. Two strong arguments against choice one. The memos are not all true. How about choice three? The Illuminati might not be a straight, unbroken line from the first recruit gathered by old Hassani Saba to the person who bombed confrontation. It might have died and lain dormant for a term, like the Ku Klux Klan between 1872 and 1915. And it might have gone through such breakups and resurrections more than once in eight centuries. But linkages of some sort, however tenuous, reached from the 11th century to the 20th, from the Near East to Europe and from Europe to America. Saul's dissatisfaction with official explanations of recent assassinations, the impossibility of making any rational sense out of current American foreign policy, and the fact that even historians who vehemently distrusted all conspiracy theories acknowledged the pivotal role of secret Masonic lodges in the French Revolution. All these added weight to the rejection of Choice Three. Besides, the Masons were the first group, according to at least two of the memos, infiltrated by Weishaupt. Choice One is definitely out, then and choice three almost certainly equally invalid. Choice two, therefore, is most probably correct. The theory in the memos is partly true and partly false. But what, in essence, is the theory? And which part of it is true? Which part false? Saul lit his pipe, closed his eyes, and concentrated. The theory, in essence, was that the Illuminati recruited people through various fronts, turned them onto some sort of illuminizing experience through marijuana, or some special extract of marijuana, and converted them into fanatics willing to use any means necessary to illuminize the rest of the world. Their aim, obviously, is nothing less than the total transformation of humanity itself, along the lines suggested by the film 2001, or by Nietzsche's concept of the Superman. In the course of this conspiracy, the Illuminati, according to Malik's hints to Jackson, were systematically assassinating every popular political figure who might interfere with their programme. Saul thought suddenly of Charlie Manson and of the glorification of Manson by the weatherman and Morituri bombers. And he thought of the popularity of pot smoking and of the slogan, by any means necessary, with contemporary radical youth even outside weatherman. And he thought of Nietzsche's slogans, be hard. Whatever is done for love is beyond good and evil. Above the ape is man, and above man the superman. Forget not thy whip. In spite of his own logic, which had proved that Malik's theory was only partly true, Saul Goodman, a lifelong liberal, suddenly felt a pang of typically right-wing terror toward modern youth. He reminded himself that Malik seemed to think the conspiracy emanated chiefly from Mad Dog. And that was God's lightning country down there. God's lightning had no fondness for marijuana or for youth or for the definitely anti-Christian overtones of the Illuminati philosophy. 
Besides, Malik's sources were only partly trustworthy, and there were other possibilities. The Shriners, for instance, were part of the Masonic movement, were generally right-wing, had their own hidden rites and secrets, and used Arabic trappings that might well derive from Hassani Saba or the Roshinaya of Afghanistan. Who could say what secret plots were hatched at Shriner conventions? Nah, that was the intuitive pole vaulter in the right lobe at work again. And right now, Saul was concerned with the plodding logician in the left lobe. The key to the mystery was in getting a clearer definition of the purpose of the Illuminati. Identify the change they were trying to accomplish in man and in his society, and then you would be able to guess, at least approximately, who they were. Their aim was English domination of the world, and they were road scholars, according to the Birchers. That idea obviously belonged with Saul's own whimsy about a worldwide shrine of conspiracy. What then? The Italian Illuminati under Fra Dolcino wanted to redistribute the wealth, but the international bankers mentioned in the Playboy letter presumably wanted to hold on to their wealth. Weishaupt was a free thinker, according to the Britannica, and so were Washington and Jefferson. But Saba and Joachim of Florence were evidently heretical mystics of the Islamic and Catholic traditions, respectively. So picked up the ninth memo, deciding to get more facts or pretended facts before analysing further. And then it hit him. Whatever the Illuminati were aiming at had not been accomplished. Proof. If it had, they would not still be conspiring in secret. Since almost everything has been tried in the course of human history... Find out what hasn't been tried, at least not on a large scale, and that will be the condition to which the Illuminati are trying to move the rest of mankind. Capitalism had been tried. Communism had been tried. Even Henry George's single tax has been tried in Australia. Fascism, feudalism, mysticism have been tried. Anarchism has never been tried. Anarchism was frequently associated with assassinations. It had an appeal for free thinkers, such as Kropotkin and Bakunin, but also for religious idealists like Tolstoy and Dorothy Day of the Catholic Worker Movement. Most anarchists hoped, Joachim, like to redistribute the wealth. But Rebecca had once told him about a classic of anarchist literature, Max Stirner's The Ego and His Own, which had been called The Billionaire's Bible, because it stressed the advantages the rugged individualist would gain in a stateless society. And Cecil Rhodes was an adventurer before he was a banker. The Illuminati were anarchists. It all fit. The pieces of the puzzle slipped together smoothly. Saul was convinced. He was also wrong. <laughs>